Exciting news, new parts that are fancy. So I've been driving with RTR now, this is year five, and all of our demo cars have had a very simple angle setup. Um, at first you probably saw me drive the S197s, um, and those just had a stock knuckle that was modified. And then the S550 that I drove, the car behind me, um, I don't know if it was yellow the first time I drove it or not. But either way, it was stock angle for like the first year that I drove it. Um, and then I got with Russell and Russell Walker from Walker Motorsports, or Walker Pro Motorsports. And we developed a kit, super simple, um, where he had cut a knuckle, modified it, and then uh, we used the SPL control arm kit from actually a BMW E90, <laughs> oddly enough. It was pretty close to just bolt right on. So because of that, I've been driving a car that's not really got a setup on it that's that great. You know, it's got angle, it's added what it needs to, and it's just so that I can drive the car and put on a good show, right? But I feel like when we're driving demos, we should be shredding and have a crap load of angle and drive hard. So I worked with Clay uh, from SS Manufacturing, as well as uh, Vaughn and RTR, and we came up with this steering kit that's a bolt-on solution for our demo cars, and hopefully we can offer this product to you guys. Um, so we've done a uh, 4140 steel knuckle adapter that bolts on like this, um, which is gonna be similar to the design that we've been running on the BMWs for a while. Um, what it does is it allows you to use a stock knuckle still. So your hub, your ABS, your um, all of the stuff stays uh, Mustang. Um, and then this bolts on and it has a ton of Ackerman adjustment here as you can see. It does a bunch of roll center adjustment um, by bringing the arm and the actual knuckle placement. Um, it's a very simple trail setup. It's not like super caster trail set, uh, oriented. I like the car to still have some, I don't, I'm not a big person on a lot of trail. Um, um, so we didn't really set it up to be like that. Um, and then you adjust these, uh, the Ackerman via these shims that are here. So we have a bunch of different ones ranging from basically in the center um, to majorly offset. So this is, there's four different settings here and each one can be flipped the other way to get an, either, an even more uh, definite adjustment. So that's eight different Ackerman settings that you can run with these. Again, they're 4140 uh, steel. And they just go into this slot where the tie rod is and they slide in and position the uh, tie rod location for the Ackerman. And then uh, the top hat design, it relocates the strut to get the proper amount of wheel clearance and caster. And it also holds a spring set, which I might actually end up changing this design after we test it to go to a mono ball bearing, but we'll, we'll see. Um, we'll see what works better. Um, your outer tie rod setup threads onto the stock tie rod which the stock tie rods for the Mustangs are pretty strong. That's gonna go here on the knuckle. Um, and you can see it's a pretty beefy piece. Got your sway bar attachments, which um, we're gonna work on a little bit. This is a good setup, but this is all uh, custom, like one-off stuff. This has not been tested yet. This is the prototype. I have not even installed it and driven it yet. So. We're all on, on, on uh, computer and knowledge only at this point. Um, then some nice hardware and then the actual lower control arm. Blangin'. Which is blangin'. Uh, this is raw still, unfinished, um, not anodized or anything. Um, we will be anodizing them and whatnot, but we wanted to get this test fitted and wanted to do some real world driving on it and adjust some things and, and get it set up properly. So you're probably looking at this like, what is going on? Like this is an insane lower control arm. Um, and it is, the stock setup is a dual pivot instead of a single pivot. So we've gotten rid of that, which will really increase the steering feel 
um, and allow the car to drift more like a natural uh, car, old school car, let's, let's say. Um, and it's two-piece design and bolted together with this, these sandwich plates here. And the reason it is is because on a Mustang, the tie rod has to pass through this. So if you've ever seen on our FD cars, we have a huge step out to clear that. Well, rather than doing a crazy arm that's shaped like that um, for, for this model, we've done a sandwich setup. Um, and it also gives us somewhat, some adjustment uh, in this section as well, um, better than our FD cars, honestly. Um, but our FD cars are set up only to work the way we want them to. Um, so yeah, so this is all uh, machined out of billet. SNS did all of this stuff. Um, and obviously we've got two of everything. So we're gonna pull the kit that's on the car off and we are going to install this. I have stock knuckles here and the reason I have stock knuckles here is because mine are modified already. So I needed to get some. So Gundy's was nice enough to ship some down last night because I literally fired the car up to pull it into the shop and I was like, you idiot, you can't even put these on right now. And because the modified knuckle and then this bolts to that. So if it's already been modified, you got nothing to bolt this to. So I called them yesterday afternoon. I'm like, hey, can you send these down on a truck? And they pulled them off for me and sent them down. So big thanks to them. But uh, let's see how it goes. I'm going to install this onto the knuckle first. Make sure you have stock knuckles. Oh yeah, make sure you have stock knuckles. <laughs> Obviously that's a priority. So, you can see, this is the current kit we have on here now. Um, this is about max angle here. Um, I think we measured it out, it's about 45 or 46 degrees. Um, it's like E90 SPL kit that we just modified in the knuckle. I had, uh, actually, Russell Walker modifies the knuckle and we just got the kit from SPL. So I'm gonna pull all this off. I have to pull the knuckle off as well because we got to put a stock one on uh, because this has been shortened and our bulkhead won't bolt up to it. Obviously you saw me already do that. So we're gonna get that going now. I'm gonna pull the rotor off and all that. Give myself a little bit less weight to hold on to and then swap that out. All right, so for us, since we're swapping the knuckles, the easiest way to do it was to do it all. Everything is hard all at once. So we've got all that whole entire knuckle and steel in the same way. But everything with the tie rod, the tie rod's already in the box. Here. And now we're ready to uh, install the new stuff. And we're gonna zing these tight and then uh, move on to put the knuckle on. Alright, so then we're gonna put the knuckle on. Booyah. Strut bolted back on. Set our sway bar length up. Try to get it so there's not really any bind. And we'll lock that down in a second. We still gotta tighten this and put our tie rod on, and then we're pretty much pretty much there. Don't let me forget to put some anti-seize on that. It's been sitting in the yard for a little while. Nature's Loctite. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> most difficult part of this entire deal. Just getting this to go. <laughs> These are so hard. I'm, I'm really trying to like, just make this work the first time. So let's see. I got it zoomed in so everyone can see. Right, here we go, first attempt. You look crooked. Oh! So I started this with just one thread on the tie rod. So that way these are equal amounts. So it's easy to know how much you got left on each of them. Pull the wheel straight real quick. Wheel straight. Wheel. It's wheel straight. Oh. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's got some room to go. It'll just be easier this way. Get arm pump, dude. 
a double-handed twisty boy. Alright, got big old Brembo's back on. Fun fact, you don't need to upgrade your knuckles to put these on. These are 2016 EcoBoost knuckles, like basically base model ones. And this caliper bolted right onto them with this rotor and everything. So kind of cool. Fun fact. Fun fact. Okay, so we just buttoned up this. It's a little bit of a pain. Um, our coilover was a little bit tough. I can't imagine it was because we've jumped this thing about 800 times and launched it in the air. <laughs> but we, uh, we just pulled it off and put it in the vise and it adjusted right back up just because of how everything bolts on here and the length of the arm, because of the angle of the arm, we had to raise it up a little bit. Um, the car used to like sit tire on fender pretty much in the front. Um, and now there's gonna be maybe like a quarter inch gap and I raised it about an inch. So it was gonna be like up here. And with the 20s, it wasn't gonna work. We can get finalized adjustment. I just wanted to get it at a height that I know would work and we'd be able to test it. Um, so we got everything uh, finished up here. We just have to set the toe, which we're gonna do with this. Um, I'm gonna eyeball it tonight and then tomorrow I'll come out and actually align it and uh, shoot some content on how much steering angle it gets with 20 by nine and a half plus 35. So pretty, Pretty reasonable tire when wheel set up, so sweet. All right, first first attempt here, new steering kit. I'm actually super pumped. I'm really bummed it's raining, but gotta get the dynamics to work with both of them.
this. Yeah, spin. you had to force the spin though. We found the limit. Yeah. Like, this gives me a lot more confidence because we, before, like, this was max. That was full cool low before. But now I have all that extra. Yeah. Drifted and it's perfect. Sick. 